Hi guys, welcome to another video. My name is Bill Hanna and today we'll be talking about the trial balance. The reason why we have a trial balance is because we want to summarize all of the business activities that we've recorded throughout the months in the form of journal entries. These journal entries will result in a balance for each account in the general ledger. And so in this video, we will look at an example of an unadjusted trial balance go through the month end adjustments and arrive at the month end trial balance. So let's jump right in. Let's look at an example trial balance as of January 31, 2020. Uh, the trial balance will consist of all of the active accounts in our general ledger. So pretty much we're looking at the cash accounts, accounts receivable, inventory, payables, uh, all of the equity accounts, and then revenue and uh, cost accounts. And then we're looking at the balance uh, for each of these um, GL codes. And pretty much you gotta remember that assets will have a debit nature, um, liabilities will have a credit nature. Uh, and to help you remember all that, uh, let's look at this uh, mnemonic here, which is dealer, D-E-A-L-E-R which then stands for dividend expenses assets liabilities equity and revenue and so this is the easiest way to remember guys um, which accounts will have a debit nature and which accounts will have a credit nature so pretty much dividend have debit nature uh, expenses is the same way when you record an expense you record a debit to expense and a credit to either cash or accounts payable assets the same way um, it's a debit nature while liabilities equity and revenue uh, whenever you record a journal entry for them uh, they have a credit nature um, and so this is the easiest way to remember what accounts has a debit nature and what which ones have a credit nature remember the purpose of a trial balance is to make sure that the journal entries that we've recorded throughout the period um, equal or net out to zero so the debits equal credits and so in this example here of a trial balance uh, as of January 31 um, you can see that the total is zero meaning that the sum of all debits equals the sum of all uh, credits um, which is a good start it doesn't mean that your trial balance is 100% correct because you could have recorded the same entry twice and you'll still net out to zero or you could have reversed a journal entry or recorded it in a flip way so it's wrong but you still net out to zero so having a trial balance that nets out to zero is a good start but it doesn't mean that everything is correct you still have to check it and make sure that you've recorded um, everything in the right way which is pretty much the purpose of an audit um, and so that's uh, that's really the only way to get comfort over a trial balance now let's go through an example of a working trial balance and the idea of a working trial balance is that at the last day of the month you have a what's called unadjusted trial balance and what you do is you look at month end adjustments uh, pretty much like any invoices you've received uh, month end um, if you haven't recorded revenue for the month you record revenue um, and all of these adjusting entries so let's go through an example of that and let's work through the same example by looking at uh, January of 2020. And so pretty much we're looking at uh, January 30th. So this is like one day uh, before month end and we're looking to close the books. And we have a couple of transactions that we want to get in so that we can have our closed uh, trial balance. So in this example, we'll look at a few transactions. Um, one is we're buying inventory for 100,000. Uh, we've received uh, invoice for a monthly rent for 50,000 uh, and we've sold goods for $2 million um, at a cost of $1.5 million. So let's go ahead and work through that. So let's work through transaction number one, which is uh, buying inventory for $100,000. Um, you know, obviously you record a, a debit to inventory for 100,000 and a credit to accounts payable. So this means that you are buying inventory on credit, uh, not for cash. It means that you'll pay in the future. Debit to inventory, uh, credit to accounts payable. Uh, transaction number two, which is a monthly rent. Um, you know, we've said before expenses have a debit nature. So whenever you record an expense, it's debit to that expense and credit either to cash um, or to accounts payable if you're um, uh, buying on credit. In this case, we are recording um, 50,000 uh, as a debit to rent expense and um, 50,000 to accounts payable 
uh, meaning that we are paying that in the future, maybe in the next uh, week or so. Um, let's look at transaction number three, which is uh, selling goods for $2 million. Um, obviously, the first entry is to record a debit to accounts receivable for $2 million and a credit um, to revenue um, for $2 million. Uh, don't forget uh, the cost. If you sold inventory for $2 million, uh, we are saying that the cost is $1.5 million. Uh, so you need to go ahead and record the cost. Um, journal entry for the cost will be debit to cost of goods sold and credit to uh, inventory. You are recording the costs as a debit, which costs, remember, has a debit nature. Um, and you're recording um, reduction to inventory. That's why you credit inventory for 1.5 million. And now that you've uh, recorded your three tra transactions, you're pretty much ready to look at the adjusted triad balance as of January 31, 2020. And that's gonna be then um, taking the beginning balance um, as of January 30 and adding in across these transactions and arriving at the ending balance for each of these uh, GL codes, which will um, sum uh, to zero, which indicates your debits equals your credits. Um, and now you have a month end trial balance, which then you can use to generate um, your financial statements. I hope this video makes sense. And if it does, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who you think might benefit from the content. Consider subscribing to my channel to help me grow and encourage me to do more of these videos. And I'll see you on the next one.